Why Dead Whales Are So Dangerous Whales are truly fascinating creatures. One of the coolest things about them is their gargantuan size. Take the blue whale, for instance. It's not just the largest living being on Earth nowadays. It's the largest animal that's ever existed on this planet. You could easily walk through a blue whale's arteries, and its tongue alone weighs more than a full-grown elephant. This almost spellbinding fascination explains why a beached whale so easily gathers crowds of onlookers. People don't want to miss out on such a rare opportunity to steal a peek at this giant from up close. If only they knew how incredibly dangerous it is to stand near a dead whale. Today, you're going to find out exactly why that is. But first, remember to hit that subscribe button to join the Bright Side of Life. We put out new videos every single day, so don't forget to ring that notification bell so that you won't miss a thing. Alright, back to whales. The hazardous thing about dead whales is, they tend to, uh, explode. Yes, you heard that right. And when this happens, it's no joke. In just a fraction of a second, several tons of a whale's insides burst out of its body at over 45 miles an hour, flying up to 50 feet in the air and reaching a distance of more than 160 feet. That means innocent bystanders risk not only getting covered with disgusting, vile-smelling goo, but also getting injured by a whale's enormous heavy guts flying out of its body at high speeds. This danger increases tenfold if somebody decides to climb on top of or poke the carcass. In fact, there have been cases of people standing on a beached whale being literally blown into the air. But why exactly do they explode? Well, after a whale dies, its insides start to rot, giving off methane, a highly explosive gas, as a byproduct. This gas accumulates in air pockets until the pressure reaches unsurpassable levels. But methane isn't the only gas that builds up in the body of a dead whale during decomposition. Several other gases are released, and to tell you the truth, they're a lot stinkier than methane. During the process of fermentation, different tissues of a dead body dry out, producing gases like carbon dioxide. During putrefaction, proteins in tissue break down. This not only liquefies organs, it also produces some really foul smells. Be you! As you can imagine, when fermentation and putrefaction come together, the result is a huge bloated carcass full of built-up gases. And there's one more thing about whales. Under their extremely tough skin, these animals have a thick layer of fat called blubber. When you add those two factors to the equation, it becomes clear why these trapped gases have a hard time escaping. But what about through the blowhole, anus, or other exits? Well, in especially larger or more bloated beached whales, their own body weight often causes their orifices to close up, creating the perfect storm for an impending explosion. So, that means there are two possible scenarios when it comes to decaying beached whales. Either the massive creature will explode, or the gases will find an exit and the carcass will simply deflate. Unfortunately, you can't know for sure which one it'll be. It's a lot like a ticking time bomb, ready to go off without warning at any second. In fact, this process of decomposition happens in the body of pretty much any dead creature. It's just that whales explode like a volcano due to the sheer size of these mammals. The bigger an animal is, especially one with tough skin and a thick layer of fat, the more gas and pressure build up in its body. That's why a lot of experts believe that local officials should organize transportation to move the carcasses of beached whales back to the sea. Then, after the vicinity has been cleared of noisy onlookers, it's safe to make a slit in the carcass to release the internal pressure. That way, a much more dangerous explosion can be avoided. But still, even in the case of controlled and planned procedure, things can go terribly wrong. For example, if somebody accidentally cuts in too deep, the release of the built-up gases will be extremely wild, so it's difficult to control this situation, even for experts. To give you some idea of what can happen when a bloated whale isn't deflated, I'll tell you a few stories. 
In 2004, researchers in Taiwan were transporting a 60-ton sperm whale carcass on a flatbed truck to National Cheng Kung University, where they wanted to dissect and study it. Unfortunately, the whale unexpectedly burst en route, splattering bystanders, cars, houses, and shops with guts and blood. Gives a whole new expression to, there she blows. Sorry. But so far, the most spectacular and terrifying whale explosion happened in Oregon in 1970. A large sperm whale washed ashore in Florence and soon turned into a huge, smelly disaster. Local authorities were at a loss as to what to do with the carcass. Finally, they decided to use dynamite. Their plan was to blast the whale into tiny pieces and, thus, make it more edible for sea creatures, crabs, and birds. The idea wasn't necessarily bad, until something went terribly wrong. The officials put over half a ton of dynamite under the whale's body. A military veteran with years of experience in explosives had warned them that this was way too much. But unfortunately, no one took his advice. So, about 70 bystanders were told to move a quarter of a mile away, and the explosives were set off. The blast was so powerful that it rocked the beach. Chunks of rotting flesh and internal organs flew into the air and started to fall on the horrified crowd. Luckily, nobody was seriously injured, but most cars parked in the vicinity were crushed by the fleshy debris. A journalist on the scene, Paul Lindman, later recalled that one car was literally flattened by a piece as big as a coffee table. The whale's body managed to decorate everything within a radius of 800 feet. But the worst thing became obvious after the dust had settled. The chunks were still too big for any animal to eat. Not to mention, a huge piece of the carcass remained intact even after the explosion. So, in the end, authorities still had to clean up all the mess on their own, and now they had an even bigger mess to deal with than before. You may be wondering what happens to a whale when it dies at sea. Nothing unusual, actually. Its carcass eventually sinks to the seafloor. It's too massive for predators to tear apart, so the dead animal typically arrives at the bottom in one piece. And since whales are so big, different communities eventually start growing around this impressive source of food. The first animals to arrive and feast are deep sea sharks, hagfish, and other predators. They break the carcass into pieces and strip off its soft tissues. Then creatures such as bone-eating worms, like Ostax mucoflorus, destroy the skeleton. Believe it or not, this process can go on for over 30 years and sustain a lot of living beings in the area. This means that a whale's afterlife is as ecologically important as its living one. Have you ever seen a whale in your life, either dead or alive? Do you know any other fascinating facts about these creatures? Tell us in the comments below. Show us that you had the stomach to make it to the end of this video by giving it a like. Thanks for joining us today on the Bright Side of Life.